Good afternoon. I'm Andrew Tang, the Governor from Scots College. Today, the Reserve Bank has decided to maintain the official cash rate at 2.25%. This course of action was decided after analysis of the forecasted trends for major macroeconomic influences. Inflationary factors, such as a strong economic growth in New Zealand, were considered. And in finding a range of inflationary and deflationary pressures, we found that the net effects of these justified the OCR to be kept at its current rate. This would allow the rate of inflation to rise from its current level of 0.4% to the target range of 1-3% to in the medium term. Economic growth in New Zealand is strong, with a 2.1% increase in real GDP in the year ended December 2015. Both the Reserve Bank and the Treasury forecast an increase in real GDP of 3% each year on average until 2019. The factors that are influencing this period of stable growth include strong population growth, strong trading partner growth, and relatively low interest rates, causing an increase in consumption spending and investment. These factors all increase AD, causing demand pull inflation, so domestic growth is an inflationary pressure. The inflationary pressure is particularly high given the rate of increase in AD, since the economy is approaching the full employment level of output, where the output gap is close to zero. As a result of this growth, New Zealand median weekly incomes have increased 4.3% in the past year to $621 <coughs> per week. This upward trend is expected to continue in the foreseeable future, with nominal wage growth expected to average at 3% per year until 2019. Since nominal wage growth has well exceeded the rate of inflation, real wages have increased. Budget 2016 also includes a $652 million social investment package, which should increase the incomes received by beneficiary and low-income working families. All these factors indicate that consumers should have more disposable income to spend, increasing the consumption spending component of AD and adding inflationary pressure. The unemployment rate has been slowly but steadily decreasing and has remained at 5.7% in the first quarter of 2016. This can be attributed to labour force participation being at an all-time high and the male employment rate being at its highest point since the December 2008 quarter. In the future, the New Zealand unemployment rate is projected to fall and remain stable at 5%. This is because of the strong demand for labour due to increasing economic growth and the ongoing Canterbury rebuild, as well as physical injection in Auckland and Queenstown. In the ANZ Business Outlook Survey, employment intentions were unchanged at 18 points. However, this is still relatively high. With more workers able to find employment, fewer people will be on the unemployment benefit, so average incomes should rise. This increase in purchasing power should lead to an increase in AD and thus inflationary pressure. The low unemployment rate is un reflected in ANZ's Roy Morgan Consumer Confidence Report, which showed that consumer confidence decreased slightly in July from 118.9 to 118.2 points, but rose in seasonally adjusted terms, and is <coughs> stable and relatively high compared to 2012 levels. This is because households feel financially better off because of real GDP growth, which leads to increasing household income and falling unemployment. As consumers are more confident that their income will not fall, this increases their marginal propensity to consume, so they're more likely to spend rather than save. This means consumption spending is set to increase, resulting in an increase in AD and thus adding inflationary pressure. Despite the recent rise in business confidence from 11.3 to 20.2 points, Business confidence is still relatively low compared to recent years, where the economy has strengthened since the global financial crisis. This is assumed to be linked to factors such as the high New Zealand dollar and the fall in dairy export prices. While the threat of a Chinese trade war has recently been in the news, Berlin economics have validated that this is a political stunt that will not turn to fruition. This has been reaffirmed by both John Key and the Chinese Embassy of New Zealand, so this will have a minimal effect on business confidence. Although overseas investment in New Zealand is relatively high, this is still proportionately small compared to domestic investment. This means net business confidence is expected to fall in the future since dairy prices are continuing their downward trend. 
Therefore, the investment component of AD is likely to decrease, causing deflationary pressure. Over the past year, the national median house price has increased by 11.1% to $500,000. This is due to a combination of factors including high migration, a shortage of supply in Auckland, and low interest rates. However, house price inflation is forecasted to fall sharply in the future due to the implementation of new government policies to deter foreign investment, and an increase in supply in Auckland. This is expected to cause deflationary pressure. In the recent Budget 2016 announcement, it was forecasted that a $700 million surplus would be made this year, and even larger surpluses each year until 2020. In order to repay overseas debt, the government has lowered injections into the economy and has maintained a relatively low operational allowance of $1 billion. As the forecasted surpluses will be repaid mainly to overseas debtors, the increased tax revenue results in an increased withdrawal. Therefore, since money is being taken out of the economy, there will be deflationary pressure. The price of Dubai crude oil has fallen sharply to be 50% below the record peak in 2014. The decline in oil prices is a positive, unexpected outcome for aggregate supply in the New Zealand economy. It lowers short-term inflation and increases output. The effect on inflation is relatively large as the price of, as the price of goods which require oil-intensive production processes <coughs> such as plastics will decrease, lowering the average price level. Since oil prices make up 40% of petrol prices, and petrol prices compose 5% of the CPI, this decrease in oil prices has a direct effect on the index. While this is currently providing reduced inflationary pressure, it must be noted that oil prices are currently on the rise and are expected to return to historically high levels. These inflationary expectations will cause inflationary pressure. Overall, the price of commodities that New Zealand exports have decreased over the past year. This has been heavily influenced by dairy prices falling 55% below their record peak in February 2014. Forecasts from major banks do not predict dairy prices to rise in the near future, which will see dairy income fall $10 billion compared to 2014. As exporters earn less income, consumption spending and investment will decrease, causing deflationary pressure and offsetting the inflationary pressure from the rising oil prices. We believe that the current exchange rate is not conducive to New Zealand's long-term economic objectives, as it remains unsustainably and unjustifiably high on both a TWI and USD basis. As such, strategies to control it need to be contemplated. At 72, the New Zealand dollar TWI is down slightly since the start of last year. However, the NZD AUD exchange rate continues to fluctuate near its post-float high of 0.97. Such a strong exchange rate has poor ramifications for New Zealand exports, making them less price competitive. Furthermore, this makes imports relatively cheaper, reducing AD and therefore inflation. In combination with a significant fall in oil prices, this is a big deflationary factor. Economic growth in New Zealand's trading partners' economies continue at a better than expected pace in 2000, 2016, according to the International Monetary Fund's July update. As shown by the graphs, there's a great level in the depth of growth in our trading partners. Growth in New Zealand's emerging Asian trading partners has slowed, but is still well above growth in most advanced economies. While the UK's exit from the European Union has significant short-term effects and is likely to dampen <coughs> confidence overseas, neither New Zealand nor our major trading partners have a particularly high share of trading with European countries, so the impact on our economy is unlikely to be significant. With our trading partners having a weighted growth rate of around 4%, export receipts are expected to rise steadily, resulting in inflationary pressure. In summary, there are a variety of inflationary pressures and deflationary pressures influencing the New Zealand macroeconomy. Through an evaluation on the number and scale of these pressures, it appears that the magnitude of the inflationary pressures outweigh the deflationary pressures. As such, we see fit that the official cash rate remains at 2.25%, so that inflation can rise once more to between 1 and 3% as the policy targets agreement states. 
This is supported by the most recent Reserve Bank estimates, which suggest that the target range can be attained by the end of this year. With strong growth of the New Zealand economy expected to continue, the inflationary pressures are also anticipated to be present. Decreasing the OCR could cause problems to rise once more in the housing market, particularly in Auckland where prices are still increasing rapidly. Furthermore, it could counteract government measures in the region that have been taken to cool the market down, such as the LVR restrictions. We would only decrease the OCR in the future if some of the macroeconomic indicators did not follow their predicted trends, especially economic growth falling short of target levels and the forecast depreciation of the New Zealand dollar and the increase in oil prices failing to occur. Therefore, the OCR should be retained at its current level of 2.25% to maintain price stability in the medium term. Okay, thank you team, that, that was very comprehensive. Uh, to start off, I'd like to um, test your understanding of, of how monetary policy affects the economy. So obviously you've uh, recommended that we, we hold the OCR, but could you tell me uh, what the impact would be if instead the OCR was reduced? Yep, so I think we've revised this a lot. So firstly, um, of course, the first thing that we need to establish is that the official cash rate is the rate at which the Reserve Bank, uh, uh, sorry, private banks can borrow from the Reserve Bank. Plus minus, but plus 2.5. Yeah. Um, so yeah. hence, lowering this will affect their ability, uh, the ability for them to borrow and affect the um, interest rates that they provide to their consumers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So by reducing the interest rates that you provide to consumers, you increase um, spending and increase borrowing from the banks, which increases consumer spending overall. And investment. And investment, yeah. yeah. It also affects the exchange rate as well. Yeah. yeah. So Leads to, leads to inflation. So, yeah, so you're, that affects the exports and imports of New Zealand because of the fact that when you decrease the OCR, that affects the exchange rate. Yeah, so um, uh, for overseas um, investors, um, when the New Zealand, when the amount that they might invest in New Zealand is dependent on the amount of interest that they may gain mm. of these short term uh, like monetary inv investments. So hence, if the OCR was to be lowered, they would um, earn less interest of these, mm. and this would um, reduce the amount of demand for the New Zealand currency, yeah. hence cause uh, depreciation. depreciation. Yeah. Yeah. So in summary, um, decreasing the OCR has a variety of effects on the New Zealand macro economy. Firstly, it um, increases consumption spending, because it becomes cheaper to borrow money from commercial banks. It also increases investment for the same reason, it becomes cheaper for firms to borrow from commercial banks. But it also has an effect on the New, Ze New Zealand exchange rate. So when you decrease the OCR, the New Zealand dollar depreciates, and this is due to the supply and demand of New Zealand currency. So if the New Zealand dollar depreciates as a result of the decrease in OCR, this means that um, one New Zealand dollar can buy fewer overseas uh, currencies, so that means exports will increase and imports will uh, decrease. So because of this, the value of our net exports will increase. So we've got consumption spending increasing, investment increasing and net exports increasing. This increases AD. But also on the supply side, um, imports are also cheaper, so that means the cost of imported raw materials, such as oil, will become cheaper. This lowers the cost of production for firms, increasing AS. Uh, so both the um, in increase in AS and the increase in AD cause uh, greater economic growth and also causes inflation. Okay, thanks guys. So annual net immigration to New Zealand is currently at a record high. What impact would you expect this to have on the New Zealand economy? Well, first off, you have more people in the economy that increases spending overall mm -hmm. because there's more people to um, buy, buy products, so there's greater demand. So that increases your consumer spending. Mm -hmm. the, the, the increased uh, workforce also uh, leads to a potential increase in the long run agri supply. Yep. Um, it's, you're increasing the mm -hmm. quantity of your factors of production, which is the labour force. It could also be quality if they're higher skilled, because mm -hmm. typically Definitely. these immigrants have more um, mm -hmm. more skills, that's why they, yep. uh, New Zealanders want them to come here. Yeah. So in summary, um, AD will increase because uh, higher net immigration means more New Ze uh, people are coming into New Zealand than the people leaving New Zealand. 
this will increase consumption spending and therefore AD. But it also increases AS because these immigrants will find jobs and typically these jobs are higher skilled than the average job you might find in New Zealand. This is why we encourage immigration into New Zealand. So this will increase AS possibly more than AD in the long run. So it will probably lead to deflationary pressure because of the magnitude of these shifts. Excellent, thank you. Um, what do you think the Reserve Bank will need to do to the OCR over the next couple of years in order to meet its objectives under the PTA? So the PTA is the policy target agreement, yeah. Yeah. essentially saying inflation between 1% and 3%. And, and with 2% uh, um, yeah. mid yeah. mid yeah. medium term. So obviously yeah. our current inflation is at 0.4%, Four, which is, which, which is um, obviously lower than what we want it mm. to be. So to increase inflation, but, um, the Reserve Bank could decrease the the OCR. How yeah. we believe that that's not. Yeah, it's also um, subjective to the current state of New Zealand and the global economy. Mm -hmm. For example, um, with our projections, due to the many factors influencing inflation and pressure, we believe um, the Reserve Bank mm -hmm. at this current point in time, mm -hmm. like, do not need does not yeah. need to lower the OCR for to meet the PTA. And also there are the implications on right now presently lowering the OCR on the housing market mm. Mm. because um, when you get that decrease in the OCR and the consequent decrease in the, in, in the interest rates you get a lot more demand for housing and right now we're a supply shortage so that wouldn't be ideal. Mm. So currently in the New Zealand macro economy the scale of the inflationary pressures outweighs the scale of the deflationary pressures so we believe that if we leave the OCR as it is uh, the rate of uh, the inflation rate will go within the 1.3%, 1 to 3% target range within the next year as shown by the projections in our PowerPoint. So we think the best idea is to leave it as it is. Great, thanks team. So the Reserve Bank has proposed to tighten LVR restrictions in response to financial stability risks associated with the housing market. Uh, can you identify some strengths and weaknesses of LVR restrictions? Um, again, that the the revised updates to make it harder for investors or second home yeah. or <coughs> buying a second home um, investors to increase to a 40% yeah. um, mm -hmm. deposit with a 5% exception obviously makes it harder for investors and results in it making it easier for Domestic. for first home buyers or people who are just trying to get into the housing market to buy a house and obviously the L reducing making that easier the LVR on those Auckland Auckland first home buyers by reducing that exception gap also helps aid those people to buy houses and therefore is probably quite efficient or beneficial to help. Um, on top of that, um, the, through the changes to the LC, LVR, I guess you could also say it makes it safer for the banks almost um, due to mm -hmm. the increased deposits that they have to make mm -hmm. prior to uh, purchasing the houses, so I guess that's the main positive, and uh, I guess you've outlined outlined the um, negatives, which is that it makes it more difficult for certain home buyers. But but we're saying that overall. Yeah, but yeah. overall, yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. So to summarize, the LVR is a measure of how much of a deposit you have to make for loans. So by increasing the LVR, um, home buyers or anyone wanting to borrow has to pay a larger deposit. So we believe the advantages of the LVR is that it's very specific. So if you change the OCR, this has lots of flow-on effects on the economy, which may not be desired, but to address the um, issues with the housing market and the th threat of um, financial instability, the LVR is very specific and it targets the housing market in particular. So we believe this is an advantage. Um, on the contrary, the only disadvantage of the LVR is that it restricts economic growth because it means that less people, even if they are willing to, uh, will be able to take out loans. So these people who do not have enough of a deposit won't be able to take out a loan and this puts a damper on economic growth, which is the disadvantage of increasing LVR restrictions. Excellent answer. Thank you, guys. So you mentioned earlier that the latest outturn of CPI inflation was 0.4% on an annual basis. Do you think that the Reserve Bank is meeting its objectives under the PTA? Well, currently it's below the 1% minimum boundary of the PTA, but as we've forecasted, it's going to increase up above 1%, which would put it within the, the range yeah. as you know, listed. I think, again, that that is right, that we have got those inflationary pressures outweighing the deflationary yeah. pressures, at, as we mentioned. Mm. At, 
so we the New Zealand economy will return to yeah. so it to is its <coughs> to meet the PTA yeah. yeah and if the Reserve Bank were to change the OCR to assist that or speed that process up it would be going against its other objectives mm, to ensure financial and price, price stability, building. especially in the housing market again, or and in mm. other areas. Yeah, so, and then, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. It could also risk going above the 3% margin. Yeah. Mm. Even if we were to overshoot it. But yeah, I think on a number to number basis, like, you could easily argue that the Reserve Bank isn't meeting it. However, with right. all other factors considered, mm -hmm. especially with, uh, with the uh, state of the global and New Zealand economy, and with such high uh, external inflationary pressures, um, like we believe that the Reserve Bank, by maintaining the OCR, is meeting yes. um, the uh, PTA agreements. Mm. Okay, so to assess whether the Reserve Bank is meeting uh, the policy targets agreement, we have to assess what's the time period we're looking at. So the PTA uh, says that um, the rate of inflation should be between 1 to 3% in the medium term. So looking forward, and as we've discussed, we believe that the rate of inflation will increase to 1 to 3% in the medium term. However, in the past year or two years, the rate of inflation has been outside of this range between 0 0.1 and 0 0.4. And this, is, this has been outside of the range for a reasonable amount of time. But we still believe that we're meeting um, our ob the Reserve Bank's obligations in the agreement because while it's been outside, there have been some other circumstances. <coughs> so at the time, the Reserve Bank wasn't able to predict these um, circumstances in advance. So now, considering all the information that we have from these macroeconomic indicators, we do believe that the requirements will be met. I think we have time for one final question. Yeah, sorry, I'm just writing down the answer. But I'll finish now. <laughs> okay, so final answer, team. Um, so you've been doing a whole lot of work uh, um, on monetary policy and what the Reserve Bank's up to. So I'm going to ask you a question that hopefully you can you can help us with our work. So so next year um, the policy targets agreement, which you would have all looked at, is up for review. This comes up periodically. Um, so the Minister of Finance and the Governor will sit down and try and decide should they keep it the same or should they change it. So I was wondering, do, do you think the PTA is fit for purpose, or do you see some things that should be changed? Symmetrical and asymmetrical. Yeah, so I think obviously it's a symmetrical uh, inflation targeting that mm. we do have at the moment, obviously that 1 to 3%. Um, and a 1 to 3% uh, inflation rate, especially with the midpoint at 2%, is overall sustainable for, in, for the New Zealand economy. It ensures that there is economic growth occurring, but not rising price mm. levels too quickly or too fast, balance, yeah. so it's, it's a good balance. However, we have to look at the consideration of whether inflation targeting is actually necessary because what are the impacts of inflation targeting mm. on things like um, employment and wages and investment and so forth, and whether that, whether because we're only focusing on inflation that we're forgetting about the many other factors that play stability. into the mm. economy. Could be, t for me, too narrow of a focus, actually. Yeah, so um, I think right now we have a like currently like record high immigration. So the New Zealand population is on a steady increase. Um, because of this, like we do still need like positive economic growth, like we can, um, yeah. and as well as uh, a positive inflation. So as uh, Manraj has said quite clearly, I agree with, is that um, the current rate of like the current outline rate of inflation is not too high enough to cause like overinflation and is high enough to maintain a stable rate of uh, economic growth which I think is quite important when you take into the consideration of population as well as the potential for the increase of um, living of standard like living standards um, that that all calls for the need of in a continuous uh, increase or not like a steady increase like mm. steady economic growth yeah. and steady inflation and on top of that I think um, the originally the Reserve Bank when they raised the inflation targeting from zero to one percent the minimum um, that was to uh, prevent deflation right. so I think that of course should still be there yeah. uh, for the same purpose as it was initially mm. implemented mm. and especially sorry the last thing especially because New Zealand has not seen much inflation over yep. the last few years yeah. mm. that um, obviously, a small amount of inflation is beneficial to the mm. um, to the economy, yeah, and right. it is important to target that that one percent and avoid your yeah. uh, deflation, yeah. inflation of less than zero. So we believe it's quite a fine balance. 
uh, low inflation is always good because it encourages consumers and firms to spend and invest. Uh, this is because um, if there was no inflation, uh, consumers might just leave their purchases to later because the price will still be the same. Whereas with a little bit of inflation, consumers and um, producers have a bit of, bit of an incentive to spend and invest now. So we believe low inflation um, is a positive to the economy. However, too high inflation, uh, that causes um, instability because of consumer and business confidence decreasing. They're unable to plan for the future, so um, they might not make some investments if they don't know the return. So um, too high inflation is also, is also bad, but too low inflation um, stagnates economic growth. So we believe that um, the policy targets agreement is correct by setting a fine balance between uh, 1 and 3% on average in the medium term. Fantastic. Thank you, team. I'll, I'll refer that on to the Governor and you can see what happens next year. Um, so that's the end of the, the questions and the competition. So thank you, team. That, that was very impressive.